reputation, uh, the people. Then I meet people out in the community and say, what a, what a great company. They're, they don't talk about growth or profits or anything else. Uh, I'm proud that uh, we take care of people and do the right thing. I remember uh, we're talking to the claims department and somebody told me, one of the claims persons, that they were fighting this claim for $30 and been fighting it for six months. I said, what? $30. So at that time, we told everybody in the claims department, I don't remember the dollar figure, it was either $1,000 or $2,000. You have a right to make a decision and pay it. We'll pay the claim. And I said, I promise you, you will never get in trouble taking care of a customer. We might talk to you about it and discuss it, but you'll never get in trouble. And a couple of the claims people said it meant a lot to them that we trusted them. Well, I grew up very humble. We had eight kids in our family. Uh, and my grandfather lived with us, and we had two bedrooms. So I knew what it was like not to have a lot of money. That being said, uh, I never wanted for anything. But a, a, an older guy, he must have been all of 40, told me at the time, he said, Pat, I got two things to tell you. One is, if you take money out of the community, all, just remember to put something back. And that was great advice. He also said, stay solvent and no one will ever own you. And boy, I believe that uh, so strongly. And I never wanted to be between a rock and a hard place. I wanted to be able to make business decisions, not money decisions. And not very sophisticated, but it worked. Or one of our consultants said to me, boy, it must have been nice back in the old days. You didn't have any competition. And I said, you know what? Nobody knew who I was. I didn't have a customer service department. I didn't have a secretary. And no, it wasn't easy. You look back on it, if I had all this today, I could go back, that would be unbelievable. But I've seen what this company has done. And I saw the... Uh, I don't know what it's called, the, the recent film about visiting McGowan Brabender. And I looked at that and I thought, oh my gosh, I would hate to compete with these people. Because we uh, walk the walk. We do what we say we're going to do. And uh, that was my dream, that we could do something special. And my biggest dream was not the growth. My biggest dream is that we would be considered a community asset. That people would look us up to us as a community asset, not just uh, a large insurance company. And that's why I never wanted to sell the company either. I think we need to grow a little farther if we're going to be successful. I know our national consultant said, you guys are like any, no, nobody I've ever met because you're in a secondary market, which means we're not in New York City or wherever, maybe a tier three, and yet you're larger than almost anyone in those markets. And to be honest with you, I don't know how we did it. I really don't know, other than just trying to treat people right. There was a, I, I can't remember his name, he used to be in second in command of uh, General Electric. But uh, he said, your employees will treat your customers the same as you treat your employees. And I believe that. Happy employees treat customers well. And if you're not treating people well, it, it goes out to the customers, and I never forgot that.